We know that 80% of the UK railway network is made up of small to medium sized stations and they are the starting point for almost a billion journeys that end up passing through Network Rail's 20 managed stations. We also know that making our stations more accessible encourages the use of our network and we know that the encouraged use of our network encourages socio-economic development in the local communities where we have more accessible railway stations. This then drives regeneration in the local communities. In Network Rail we build a lot of footbridges and we have bridges on stations and we have bridges um, away from stations. The challenge that we have with this project is around station uh, footbridges. So usually we use an access for all footbridge and the timescales involved in building those bridges is, is so long that we knew we had to approach it differently. And the professional head for buildings and architecture had the idea to uh, approach some more novel suppliers and to collaborate uh, in a consortium to come up with a new design and a new process for constructing a footbridge that meant we could save a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of carbon. And, and that's how we went about looking at um, uh, starting a project through the Innovate UK competition uh, that we ultimately were successful in. Expedition Engineering are a well-known um, engineering consultancy, award-winning, should I say. Um, they are very good at challenging the brief. They are very good at designing lean and elegant structures. Um, extreme systems bring a manufacturing capability to the table that I've, I've never seen before, if I'm honest. Um, they've got a very advanced plant up in Northampton. Um, MTC develop um, and prove innovative manufacturing processes and technologies. Um, and us as Walker Construction, um, we try to glue, it, glue the whole thing together. So I guess the evolution of our collective ideas really benefits from our differences in experience and diversity. In a more traditional design and construction process, we're used to fabrication and its limitations being part of the constraints in the way we design. So with Extreme on board, we're constantly reminded of the freedom of the manufacturing process, and that opens up the design for us. It feels like a mantra of this project has been, and why not? That diversity allows those questions to be explored without preconception. And we've had some really interesting outcomes from those deep dives. Also, having Network Rail as an integrated part of the team has removed the traditional interaction of client and team, shortcutting that whole process in a really, truly collaborative way. So we've designed this bridge as a, um, a system. It's not a, it's not a, um, a custom designed bridge for each site. What it is is a system that you can configure to fit on any site. Uh, it means the, the, the components can vary in scale or in number. Uh, they can be tuned up and down, depending on whether you need to go higher or lower over the railway. Spans can vary. We can go from two track to four track with an island platform to six track or whatever. So it's, it's a, a reconfigurable design and has been from the very outset. It's been designed as a kit from the outset and in order to turn that into something that's more than just a, a piece of design philosophy, we've, we've been working with the MTC, the Manufacturing Technology Centre in Coventry, on a knowledge-based engineering configurator, which is a bit like the configurators you get for uh, designing your kitchen, or if you want to buy a new car, um, you go online and you can specify all sorts of things, but within a family environment. The configurator is a highly important element to the bridge and the design and concept. Uh, what the knowledge-based engineering will allow us to do is to eliminate large proportions of the design lead time and it will speak electronically to the manufacturing systems and processes, which will ultimately allow us to further demonstrate Industry 4.0 and digitalization. Prototyping is a fundamental process within the manufacturing environment. Um, simply allows us to ensure that our systems and processes are aligned with the products that we wish to produce. And what this does is that through the prototyping stages is that 
it will highlight any issues or anomalies that need to be rectified prior to production. And what this then essentially does for us is it creates a seamless transition from the final design to manufacture. In this process, I guess if we followed a more linear form of design, uh, we wouldn't really get the benefits of that really, really early involvement of the manufacturer and contractor. So by turning things upside down and making a prototype really early on in the process, uh, before we'd even settled on the final option for the Aber Bridge, uh, it gave us uh, insight, I guess, into the true opportunities available in the manufacturing process. And that's really informed our concept design in a way that we wouldn't have otherwise. I think obviously the, the, the next steps are to arrive at a successful completion at March 22, which we're all, as I alluded to before, we're all very confident that we can achieve. Um, and it's an exciting journey. We've started really, really good. Um, we're sort of slightly ahead of program. So, um, yeah, moving forward, we've obviously got an obligation under our funding from IUK that we will um, develop and implement a exploitation plan. And we're working that up concurrently with um, what we're doing on, on the Ava Bridge project at the moment. The bridge is being constructed at the uh, Railway Innovation and Development Centre at Network Rail in uh, Melton Mowbray. And uh, we've been working with the team at the RIDC to, to plan the construction. And the location we've chosen is going to be a disused station that we have over a live test track there with overheads. So really representative of how it will ultimately be built on the railway and quite a challenge for the project, but a realistic one that means that we'll be truly testing the design and build a process that we've got to go through to build these bridges. Our aim with the AVA project is that we'll revolutionise the way that we approach station footbridge design, manufacture and installation. Meeting the targets that we set in the project brief of significantly reducing costs making it far more environmentally friendly and reducing construction installation time, we believe will allow station footbridges to be rolled out at a much quicker uh, timescale than they currently are. This will affect the whole of the UK as Network Rail manages the entire UK network. So the Ava footbridge has the potential to drive increased accessibility across the whole of the UK's railway stations.